In the grand tapestry of human civilization, few inventions have had such a profound impact as money. It is, uh, an idea, a promise, a tool that we have collectively agreed to trust. Before its existence, life was a complex dance of barter and trade. If one wanted bread, one had to find a baker who in turn, needed what one had to offer, perhaps a pair of shoes or some pottery. This system, while direct, was often inefficient. The chances of two individuals having precisely what the other desired at the same moment were remarkably slim. The need for a universal medium of exchange became overwhelmingly apparent as societies grew larger and more complex. So, we invented money. It began in many forms. Seashells, precious metals, even large carved stones have all served this purpose. What mattered was not the item itself but the shared belief in its value. This trust allows money to perform its remarkable functions. It acts as a unit of account, a common measure that allows us to price goods and services consistently. A loaf of bread has a price, a new coat has a price, and we understand their relative worth. It is also a store of value, enabling us to save the fruits of our labor for a future time, confident that its purchasing power will remain. This simple concept revolutionized human interaction. It unlocked the potential for sprawling markets, intricate trade networks, and the specialization of skills. A farmer could now sell their entire harvest for money, and then use that money to buy all the different things their family needed, from clothing to tools to medicine. They no longer needed to find a tailor who wanted wheat or a doctor in need of potatoes. Money acts as an intermediary, a silent lubricant that keeps the enormous, complex machinery of our global economy turning smoothly, connecting billions of us in a web of commerce and cooperation. Today, in its most familiar form, money is the paper note in our hands or the digital number on a screen. The physical banknote in particular is a fascinating object. It is a symbol of a nation's identity, its economy, and its promise to its people. The journey of how this humble yet powerful piece of paper is made is a story of incredible precision, artistry, and immense responsibility. It is a process shrouded in security, a testament to the importance we place on this remarkable human invention, a tool that has shaped our world in countless ways. The birth of a banknote is a meticulous and highly controlled process, a symphony of design and engineering that begins long before any ink touches paper. The first step is the design itself, a task undertaken by a team of skilled artists and security experts. This is not merely about creating something aesthetically pleasing, it is about embedding a nation's story and its security into the very fabric of the note. Portraits of historical figures, depictions of national landmarks and symbols of cultural heritage are carefully chosen. Every line, every pattern, and every color choice is deliberate, contributing to a design that is both a work of art and a fortress against forgery. Once the design is finalized and approved, the journey moves to the engraving stage. This is a craft that blends ancient tradition with modern technology. A master engraver painstakingly carves the design into a soft steel plate, a process that can take many months to complete. The depth and character of these hand-carved lines are unique and incredibly difficult for a counterfeiter to replicate. This master plate, known as a die, is then used to create the printing plates that will produce millions of identical banknotes. The level of detail achieved here is astonishing. Under a microscope, one can see the intricate patterns and textures that give a banknote its distinctive feel and appearance. The printing process itself is a multi-stage marvel. The first layer of color is applied using a technique called offset printing. This method lays down the subtle background colors and designs on both sides of the special paper simultaneously. This creates a base layer upon which the more detailed elements will be added. It is a high-speed process, but one that demands absolute precision to ensure that the foundational colors are perfectly aligned and consistent across every single sheet. This initial step sets the stage for the more complex printing techniques that will follow. Next comes the most critical printing phase, intaglio printing. This is what gives banknotes their unique raised texture. The intaglio plates created from the master engravings are coated with a thick, viscous ink. Under immense pressure, weighing many tons, the paper is forced into the engraved grooves of the plate, lifting the ink out and creating a three-dimensional effect. When you run your finger over the portrait or the large numerals on a new banknote, that raised feel is the result of intaglio printing. It is a signature feature of genuine currency, one that is exceptionally challenging and expensive to reproduce accurately. 
The paper upon which a nation's currency is printed is in fact, not paper at all, at least not in the way we commonly think of it. The paper used for books or newspapers is made from wood pulp, which is relatively fragile and does not stand up well to the rigors of daily life. A banknote, however, must endure a tremendous amount of hardship. It will be folded, crumpled, passed through countless hands, and sometimes even accidentally washed. To withstand this abuse the substrate for money is made from a far more durable and specialized material, a unique blend that is a security feature in its own right. This special material is typically a carefully guarded blend of cotton and linen fibers. In the United States for example the paper for its dollars is composed of about 75% cotton and 25% linen. This combination gives the banknote a distinct crisp feel and a durability that wood pulp paper simply cannot match. The fibers are much longer and more resilient, allowing the note to resist tearing and degradation. The recipe for this substrate is a closely held secret, known only to the manufacturer and the government treasury. This exclusivity helps prevent counterfeiters from ever starting with the correct base material. The magic of this currency paper begins even before the printing presses start to roll. During its creation, numerous security features are embedded directly into the substrate itself. One of the most common is the security thread. This is a thin polymer or metallic strip that is woven into the paper not printed on top of it. If you hold a modern banknote up to the light you can see this thread running vertically through the note, often with microprinting on it. Another feature is the watermark, a faint image, typically a portrait, that is created by varying the thickness of the paper during the manufacturing process and is only visible when held to light. These embedded features make the paper itself an active participant in the fight against counterfeiting. They are an integral part of the banknote's structure, not just a superficial addition. Creating paper with a proper watermark and a genuine-looking security thread requires sophisticated industrial machinery and specialized knowledge, placing it far beyond the reach of all but the most advanced criminal organizations. Therefore, the very feel and composition of the note serve as the first and most fundamental line of defense, a tactile and visual clue to its authenticity that we can all check with our own hands and eyes. The power to create money is one of the most significant responsibilities a nation can wield, and it is not a decision taken lightly. The authority to print new currency is strictly controlled and regulated, typically resting with a country's central bank or treasury department. In the United States this role is filled by the Federal Reserve, while in the United Kingdom, it is the Bank of England. These institutions do not simply print money whenever they feel like it. Their decisions are guided by complex economic principles and a legal mandate to maintain the stability and integrity of the nation's financial system. The primary reason for printing new banknotes is not to create new wealth out of thin air but rather to replace old, worn-out currency. Banknotes have a finite lifespan. A low-denomination bill that changes hands frequently might last only a few years, while a high-denomination note that is used less often can circulate for over a decade. Commercial banks regularly return worn and damaged notes to the central bank, where they are meticulously inspected by high-speed machines. Notes that are deemed unfit for circulation are shredded and destroyed, and new notes are printed to replace them, ensuring the overall quality of currency in circulation remains high. Beyond replacing old notes, central banks also print money to meet increased public demand. As an economy grows, more transactions take place and more physical cash is needed to facilitate them. The central bank must forecast this demand carefully, considering economic growth, inflation and seasonal factors such as increased cash usage during holiday periods. The goal is to ensure that there is enough physical currency available for the smooth functioning of commerce, without injecting so much that it devalues the money already in circulation. It is a delicate balancing act, managed by teams of economists and financial experts. Ultimately, the decision of how much money to print is governed by strict rules and oversight. It is a matter of national economic policy not a simple manufacturing choice. These central banking institutions operate with a degree of independence from political pressure to ensure their decisions serve the long-term health of the economy. They are the guardians of the currency, entrusted with the critical task of managing its supply. Their work ensures that the money in our pockets retains its value and that we can continue to place our trust in it as a stable medium of exchange. In the ongoing battle between a nation's treasury and the counterfeiter, the banknote itself is the battlefield. To protect its integrity, a modern banknote is armed with an astonishing array of security features, each one a technological hurdle designed to thwart forgery. 
these features are layered one on top of the other, creating a defense in depth. Some are obvious and easy for the public to check while others are covert, detectable only by specialist equipment. This multi-layered approach ensures that even if a counterfeiter manages to replicate one feature, they are likely to fail at replicating the others. One of the most innovative and visually striking features is the use of color shifting ink. This remarkable ink appears to change color depending on the angle at which you view the banknote. A numeral or symbol printed with this ink might look copper from one angle and shift to green as you tilt the note. This effect is created by incorporating microscopic multi-layered flakes into the ink, a technology that is extremely difficult and expensive to obtain and replicate. It provides a quick and reliable way for anyone, from a shopkeeper to a consumer, to verify a note's authenticity with a simple tilt of the hand. Microprinting is another powerful yet subtle security measure. As the name suggests, this involves printing incredibly small text in various locations on the banknote, such as within the lines of a portrait's collar or along the border of a building. To the naked eye, these tiny letters might appear as just a solid line or a decorative pattern. However, under a magnifying glass, the hidden text becomes clearly visible. Standard printers and scanners lack the resolution to reproduce such fine detail, meaning that on a counterfeit note, this microprinting will typically be blurred, smudged, or completely absent. Beyond these visible features lie the covert ones. Many banknotes now incorporate elements that are only visible under ultraviolet or infrared light. When placed under a UV lamp, parts of the note may glow in specific bright colors revealing patterns, numbers, or symbols that are completely invisible in normal light. Similarly, some inks are designed to be visible only under infrared cameras, a verification method used by banks and cash processing machines. These hidden features provide a higher level of security, allowing for automated and expert verification, adding yet another formidable barrier for the would-be counterfeiter to overcome. The ability to print money might seem like a simple solution to a country's financial problems. If a government is in debt or needs to fund public services, why not just print more money to cover the costs? History, however, has taught us a harsh and recurring lesson about this temptation. The value of money is not inherent in the paper it is printed on, its value comes from its relative scarcity and the public's confidence in it. When a government prints money excessively, without a corresponding increase in the economic goods and services available, it upsets this delicate balance with devastating consequences. This phenomenon is known as hyperinflation. Imagine an economy where the amount of money suddenly doubles but the number of cars, loaves of bread and houses for sale remains the same. With twice as much money chasing the exact same amount of goods, sellers will naturally start demanding higher prices. Soon, the new money becomes less valuable, it buys less than it did before. If the printing continues, a vicious cycle begins. Prices spiral upwards at an accelerating rate, and people's life savings, held in that currency, can be wiped out in a matter of months or even weeks, rendering the money virtually worthless. There are stark historical examples of this economic disaster. In Germany's Weimar Republic in the early 1920s, the government printed money recklessly to pay off war debts. By 1923, prices were doubling every few days. People had to carry cash in wheelbarrows just to buy simple groceries. A loaf of bread that cost a few marks one year cost billions of marks the next. More recently, countries like Zimbabwe and Venezuela have experienced similar catastrophic episodes of hyperinflation, leading to economic collapse, widespread poverty and immense social turmoil, all stemming from the uncontrolled printing of money. This is precisely why the control of money printing is entrusted to independent central banks, shielded from short-term political pressures. Their primary mission is to protect the value of the currency by managing its supply responsibly. By ensuring that the amount of money in circulation grows at a stable and predictable rate, roughly in line with the growth of the economy, they maintain public trust and keep inflation in check. Controlling the printing presses is not just a technical task, it is a fundamental pillar of economic stability. It ensures that the money we earn, save and spend today, will still hold its value tomorrow.